Okay, guys, no lab this week. Uh, lab report, Romanation lab report due week from today, Monday. Week from today. The lab next week will be the um, polarimetry lab, the proximal sodium. The part of the polarimetry that we skipped on the handout. Back over on the second page, optical activity, which is polarimetry. We will cover that during the pre-lab of that lab. Okay? The lab is one of the shorter ones we do. We'll have a pre-lab cover that information then. Um, okay. Let's pick up where we left off at. Purple sheet. Compounds with more than one power carbon. We have an example here, two power carbons. How many possible maximum number of stereoisomers? <coughs> four, because we have two stereogenic sites. Two to the two is four. Here are the four here. But we've got to be careful when we draw the four. This is the maximum number. We've got to want, consider, are any of these actually the same? In some cases, they will be the same, and thus the answer will be less than four. Uh, let's continue ahead here. We got to this far. What's the relationship between one and three? What's the relationship? Those are enantiomers. That's RR. This is SS. You can do your configuration. That actually still does not make them an antimony. That makes them mirror images, but are they the same or different? Yeah. Are they the same or different? I have the two here. Uh, we can look at them. Also, can we draw those in <coughs> Fisher projections? We did that last time, right? Uh, boom, 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 boom. One and three, Fisher projection, yeah? Uh, how can we confirm or prove that one and three are different? What do we look for? Yes, Waldo, plane of symmetry. Do you see a plane of symmetry? That can be difficult sometimes to see in here. Much easier to see plane of symmetries in the Fisher. So do this, now let's start with a clean slate. Trust me, in the Fisher projection, you either look straight across. Is that a plane of symmetry? No, OH is not mirroring OH. No, that's not a plane of symmetry. Or straight down. Is that a plane of symmetry? No, OH is not mirroring OH. No plane of symmetry here. Trust me, it's easy. We can talk about it for a long, long time. That's the only two places to look. I don't see one. Do you guys see one? No plane of symmetry. What does that tell us about the mirror image? It's different. That confirms it. Yes, the mirror image is different. Those are enantiomers. But we know there's a mirror image. Okay. Uh, did we draw a fissure over here? I asked you to do it, not cheat. Two Kyle carbons, we draw those vertically. Boom. Okay, if we were only doing one, we'd just do one. But we got two, so we're going to come down here and have two. And that's what we that's what we did here. Okay. Typically we put alkyl groups at top and bottom. We have a methyl here on the end, methyl here on the end. Question. Now, I have been putting methyl, it's actually four, I believe. Methyl four at the top. Okay? This is all methyl four. Because this is the methyl that's bonded to the COH, methyl COH. So this methyl is at the top. I'm going to continue to put this methyl at the top. That means this methyl is at the bottom. That means this is the ground. This is away from the ground, this is closer to the ground. So methyl 4 is away from the ground, which is up in the air. Methyl 1 is closer to the ground. By the way, that's the ground. And that's methyl 1. Okay? And alkyl groups typically at top and bottom. Okay, what does it mean to be at the top? It means it's going away from us. With methyl 4 going away, the OH is on the next carbon, on the next carbon. But do we draw the OH on the right or left? 
with the methyl going away is the OH on the right or left. Well, we stand here with the methyl going away. Away from, with this carbon being here. Stand over here with feet on the ground and look through here. Okay? And when we look through there, first off, is the OH going towards you guys or going behind the board? Towards us. Going towards you. If I'm up here looking this way, here's the carbon and the multiple is over here. Going away from me compared to the carbon. In that situation, is the OH to my left or right? To my left. To my left. It's coming towards you guys. It's yeah. my left if I'm over here. With the methyl going away, OH is on my left. I'm really drawing what I see when I stand up here. Okay? Now, let's move down to this carbon. With the methyl going away, because that's what this means. But hold on, the methyl's coming towards me. It's coming to the little guy. So some books will tell you to rotate, etc., etc. I tell you to come over here and stand over here. Because if we're over here, compared to this carbon, now the mouth is going away. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep your feet on the ground. At some point, we will end up with our feet in the air. And we'll be wrong. Feet on the ground. So I'm kind of <laughs> just laying here like this. Feet on the ground. Methyl going away, the chlorine is which side? Well, it's, it's dashed. That means it's going behind the board. So if I'm over here, behind the board is to my, to my left. Methyl going away, chlorine's on the left. Methyl going away, chlorine's on the left. What's on the right in each, um, each of these? Undrawn hydrogen. But you guys are like, but they're opposite. One H is dashed and one's bold. Yes. So is the OH and chlorine. They look like they're trans. Why are they kind of on the same side here? That's because we, kind of, we had to rotate half the molecule. But I didn't rotate the molecule. I rotated by coming to the different side. That's essentially like rotating half the molecule. There's four and a fissure. We didn't cheat. OK, what's the relationship between two and four? Look at the fissures. What's the relationship between two and four? Yeah. Do you see how two and four are mirroring each other? <coughs> yes. Uh, two and four. <coughs> are an antimer. By the way, what can we call a pair of enantiomers? Another term for a pair of enantiomers is a DL pair. Does that make sense? If you've got a pair of enantiomers, does it, is it one D and one L in terms of optical activity? Enantiomers mm -hmm. rotate people like one way, the other one rotates it the opposite. <coughs> a pair of enantiomers is often called a DL pair. Which one's D, two or four, of that pair? I have no clue. We'd have to do the optical activity experiment or procedure. Or I'd have to give you the results of that. I don't know, but I guarantee you one of them rotates more like one way and one rotates if you like the other way. It's called a D DL pair. We've got two DL pairs up here. Um, okay. What's the relationship between one and two? Diastomers. Are they enantiomers? Is one and two mirror images? Well, if you're looking at your R and R, the mirror, the mirror image of RR is what? SS. SS. It ain't SR. So are these mirror images? No. You can look at the fissures. Can you tell, are they mirror images in the fissure? <laughs> no. Not mirror images. Well, let's step back. Are they stereoisomers? Yep. Yes, these are all four stereoisomers. They all have the same name. We named it last time. Uh, 2-chloro, 
three hydroxybutane, was that it? They're all the same. They all have the same connectivity. So they are stereoisomers, but they're not enantiomers. So what are they? By default, we call them diastereomers. Okay? Diastereomers. Right hand out. What about flow diagram? Stair isomers, there's two types, enantiomers and diastereomers. Diastereomers are not mirror images. So that's what we have here, stair isomers that are not mirror images. Yeah? Now, in the, the definition of a diastereomer is given in the purple, I believe. I think it's the next page, maybe. Last page and before at the top. <coughs> One thing about diastereomers is they have different physical properties. And antimers have the same physical properties, except for rotating PP light. And One in three are antimers. They're going to have the same boiling point, same density. One and two are diastereomers. These have different properties because at any time, when the methyls are like this, these two are right next to each other. <laughs> but when the methyls are like this, they're far apart. And that just makes them very different in terms of their chemical and electronic makeup, even though it's all the same connectivity. <laughs> Diastereomers can have melting points that differ by 100 degrees such as the lab we did last week. What's the relationship between three and four? Well, are they mirror images? No, three and four are also diastereomers, right? Diastereomers is, is a classification of stero stereoisomers that is not mirror images. And it certainly can be possible, as we show right here. Uh, we have a little bit of other terminology here. Um, we got two DL pairs. How can we distinguish between the two? For example, if I said draw the, draw the DL pair of this compound, you would say, well, which DL pair do you want me to draw? Is there any other terminology that can help us here? Uh, yes. This guy <laughs> one and three. Let's look at this first. Let's go back to cis trans. Is one or is compound one cis or trans? Here we go. First off, compound one. Let's let's do a little model here. Here it is on the board, I believe. Is this it? Carbon backbone in the plane. OH blue, like water forward. Chlorine green board. There it is on the board. The OH is forward, it's also going a little up. Full ring forward, it's also coming a little down. Okay. We drew this, we drew this. We stood up here. Top carbon. We stood up here, methyl going away, stood up here. That's like me standing, I'm just going to rotate. Still standing here, but here. With methyl going away, OH is on your, which side? It's going away from you. The OH is on your left. Okay? With the methyl going away from you, uh-oh, the methyl ain't going away from you. You need to come over here and stand. Okay? Now, instead of asking you to come over here, I'm going to show you what I see over here. With the methyl going away, the chlorine is on your right. 
Okay, back to the original. Boom. We're up here. We're looking at it. Wait a minute, it's coming towards us. Now your book may say, rotate it so it's going back. Well, whatever works for you. I told you how I would recommend it. There it is as a fissure. That's this. Methyl going back, OH over here. Methyl going back, chlorine over there. So we went from there to here. Okay? Uh, is it sister trans, if we want to use that terminology? What? Okay. Two, two main groups, high priority groups, cis. Okay. What about now? So what's the answer? Do you want to call this compound cis or trans? It has free rotation. So what do you want to call it? Depends on your perspective. Cis or trans doesn't work here, but when you have free rotation, don't laugh at you. <laughs> Call me cis? Well, what am I now? I'm trans. Okay? But here's some other terminology. We can, we, can, we can name it according to the fissure. And the fissure, how are the high priority groups? On this carbon, this is high priority, just like we determined high priority before, atomic number. Things on the side, chlorine or H? Chlorine. And the fissure, they're trans. We base it on the fissure. And when they're trans in the fissure, we call it 3 O. What does 3 O mean? Trans in the fissure. Trans in the fissure, yes. <laughs> Not trans in your hand, because in your hand it can be cis, it can be trans. But what if I draw this in a fissure? <laughs> what would it be? Trans. And we call that, because we have based it on the fissure, we call it 3 of. Okay, what is 3? Compound 3. 2 of. Oh, 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's also 3 of. That's because the mirror image of 3 of is 3 of. Just like the mirror image of cis is cis. I'm cis. Be my mirror image, Brian. I'm cis. You're my mirror image. What are you? Cis. Also cis. Mirror image of cis is cis. I'm trans now. You be my mirror image. <laughs> that one back. Uh -huh. Okay, you can't do that. All right. All right. Now you're mirroring me. I'm trans. You're trans. Mirror image of trans is trans. The mirror image of 3O is 3O. Trust me. Okay. So that would be the 3O DL pair. What about the other DL pair? Is it 3O? In the fissure are the high priority groups. They're cis. In the fissure. They're cis. Okay, we call that a rethro. Do you know where that comes from, that name? I'll show you in a minute. How about this one, the mirror image? It better be urethra also. Urethra. And the fissure, the high priority groups are on the uh, <laughs> same side. Okay, how do you remember that? I said sister trans. Here's how I remember it. Um... You're on the same side. If you draw a capital E, from there, all your lines go to the same side. Yeah. You gotta be careful, it's not the same side, but we're not doing E or Z anyway. Okay? If you draw a capital T, you get one line on one side and one line on the other. E, everything's on the same side from there, from your vertical. That's how I remember. Or you can just think of that 3 as the same letter, but trans and trans. Whatever works for you, but that's how I remember. And before I put this up there, trust me, I had to think, okay. What class are you in? Boom, boom, boom. Same side, that's a retro. Okay? All right. Uh, there we go. We have the terminology.
Uh, so, is that really four different compounds, or are any of them the same? No, number the same. Did I say same anywhere? Four different compounds, as predicted. Two to the two, four. Indeed, there's your four. Two DL pairs. And then relationship between others or is diastereomeric relationship. All right, let's try the next compound. By the way, let's go ahead and look. No, we'll wait. Where did they come from? Urethra 3 we will show you. Uh, next compound. Similar compounds here, we're going to change the OH, to chlor uh, the chlorine to OH. Now, I hate to cheat too much. Let's see. We may start from scratch a little bit, but ultimately, we want to change this to OH. I know you can't just re, you want to redraw it maybe. Um, start redrawing these when these is OHs. <laughs> start fresh, redraw these as OHs. The projection. It's the second second compound, the one that got hole punched. A little bit. It's just carbon got hole punched up. Uh, the, the configuration did not change, so this, these should all be the same, and this last one is, what, R, S? Redraw the fissures as well with the chlorine change to an OH. Okay, it's the same setup, we just changed the chlorine to an OH. <laughs> now let's look at it. How many chiral carbons? Two. Two. Maximum number of stereoisomers? Two. Four. Two to the two is four. We drew four on the board. Question, can we draw a fifth one? You got a fifth type of configuration or a fifth type of possibility. No, the answer is four is the maximum number. You can't draw five. What else are you going to do? There's only two ways to configure a chiral carbon, and we did it both ways. It's really just two to the two. Okay, how I many? Question though is, is this really four different compounds? Well, let's look at it. What's the relationship between uh, one and three? One and three. What's the relationship? RR went to SS, so they look like they're mirroring, but that doesn't mean they're different. I can, I can mirror a paper clip and it's the same thing. One in three are mirror images, are they different? Well, what do we want to look for? <coughs> Waldo, you see a plane of symmetry. Is this a plane of symmetry? No. No, OH is not mirroring OH. What about, what about straight, straight here? No, you have to have an OH and mirror an OH. There's no plane of symmetry. Trust me, that's only two places to look. Up here, trust me, 
you got to hold it just right, you're looking just right, it's, it's more difficult. Fisher, boom or boom, that's it. I didn't find any plane of symmetry. That means the mirror image must be what? Those are enantiomers, which we can also call a DL pair, right? One should rotate DP light one way, one the other. Okay? What's the relationship between, by the way, in terms of a rethrow or a 3O, it's the same answer as before. In the fissure, the two high priority groups are on the opposite side. That's like a capital T to me. 3O, right? That's the 3O DL pair. All right, what's the relationship between 2 and 4? Same thing. First off, is 2 and 4 drawn as mirror images? Yes. Well, S, R, R to S. That looks like it's mirroring. Nice. Look at the fissure. Does, does 2 and 4 look like they're mirroring? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. It looks like mirror images. But that don't mean they're the same. Or that don't mean they're different. Okay, what do we want to look for? Waldo? Waldo? What did you say? Waldo. Plane of symmetry. <laughs> Do you see a plane of symmetry? Yeah. Yes! Boom! Look at that plane of symmetry. Nice. That's a plane of symmetry. The bottom half is mirroring the top half. OH mirroring OH. Methyl going away, mirroring methyl going away. There's your plane of symmetry. What does that tell us about the mirror image? Same thing. Same. Those are the same compounds. Just like the mirror image of this being this, it's the same paper clip. It's the same. Uh, we can do model, but those are the same. Are they compounds? Uh, yes. So is that a DL pair? No. No. Is this compound going to rotate PP light? Broader question. Is this compound chiral? It has two chiral centers, but is it chiral as a whole? No. Something with a plane of symmetry, like this, is not chiral. This is a compound that has two chiral centers, but even though it does, it's not chiral as a whole. We call that a meso compound. Okay? Meso. The mirror image is the same. It's not chiral. If it ain't chiral, that means it ain't going to rotate PP light. It's only chiral molecules rotate PP light. There's two reasons that ain't a DL, this is not a DL pair. Because, first off, they're just not different. They're the same thing. So why would you call one D and one L? They're the same thing. Also, they just don't rotate PP light, so you can't call it D or L anyway. Uh, a chiral. Well, it's not chiral. It's specifically though it's called meso. This is a compound that has chiral carbons, yet it's not chiral as a whole. Just called meso. So, how many total compounds on the board? Three. There's actually only three on the board. You got a DL pair, and then you got the other one. Two and four, two and four is the same compound, just drawn two different ways. Let's maybe look at models. Uh, this should be the first one. Uh, with both methyls going back, that's not this one. With both methyls going back, OH is over here. Everybody see? Well, I need to make the OH over here. Fine. Well, fine, but now the methyl's not going back. I can't ever do it. That's because this ain't this compound. This is really this one. The methyl's going back, that OH, top OH is on the right, bottom OH is on the left. That's that one. Let's do the other one. This, is, this should be this one here. With both methyls going back, this OH here, that, that's that one. This is one in three. Are they marrying each other in my hand? 
He's mirroring each other in my hand. Or do you want to draw, hold it like a fissure? Methyl's going away. Are they mirroring? Can you see them mirroring? Okay. All right. All right. Will they, will they superimpose? Let's, let's line the blacks up. Blacks are lined up. But look, the blues are not. Well, let's turn this so the blue is lined up. Okay. Well, the blue and the black there are lined up, but guess what? The other two things are. I can't. You'll never get these to superimpose. We already know that because we can't find the mirror. We can't find the plane. Mirror image is different. They're not going to be superimposable. But what about um, two and four? I can get that by doing this. Disconnect. Let me see. Two. Methyl's going back. Both the ladies on the right. Methyl's going back. Both OHs on the left. Correct? Here are the two. <coughs> Methyl's going back. Methyl's, are they mirroring each other? Mirroring? Okay. Same or different? <coughs> Well, the blues are not lining up. <laughs> well, actually, they are. It's magic with a dead. That's just because I turned it. <laughs> Why was I able to just turn it? It's a single bond. Because it has a what? Single bond. I was able to turn it because it has a plant symmetry. <laughs> That allows me to just turn it. Okay? And look, they're superimposable. It's the same compound. Two and four is the same compound. <coughs> Thus, it's only one thing. Okay? All right. Uh, questions about that there? Um, by the way, two and four is sort of a rethro. Okay? But we wouldn't call it a rethro. Forget erythro, we're going to call it meso. Uh, but yeah, 3O can never be meso. But that's just a little, don't worry about that. That's, that's getting into just tricks. Just, okay. Here's a good little trick that I'll point out. If this is a mirror plane, that means the top is mirroring the bottom. Well, first off, you've got to have all the same groups here. Okay. Obviously, that's a chlorine and angle mirror OH. That's why in the previous example, we didn't have this. Okay. But also, look at this. This is S. Forget what that says. Since that's a mirror plane, if that's S, what is this? S. No. If S looks into the mirror, what does it see? R. R. Right? A mirror plane means the top is mirroring the bottom. What's the mirror of R? S. S. Okay? For example, over here, if this is RR, that right there tells you there's no mirror plane. How can that be a mirror plane? The mirror of R is not R. That's a little trick. If it's mirroring, you'll have a different configuration. All right, let's move ahead. Um, let's look at the white. Let me show you something over here. Fishers, when you take biochemistry uh, near the back of that there, you'll learn your carbohydrates, your sugars, sugar chemistry. Sugars are typically shown in Fisher projections. We call these beautiful Fisher projections. Your sugars can start with one chiral carbon called glyceraldehyde. It's actually a sugar, but most of your sugars all have the aldehyde groups, named like that. Then you get two chiral carbons. Then you get three. Then you get down here to glucose, and you have four. 
Four color cartons. Four crosshairs. Look at your sugars that have two power carbons. Once you have two, then we got two. If the OHs are on the same side in the fissure, it's called erythros. That's where the term erythro came from. This was this came first. Then we said, well, any other compound on the same side, we're going to call erythro. If they're on opposite sides, we call it 3O. Where did that come from? It came from this sugar name, Threos. That's where your OH is on <laughs> opposite sides in that sugar. So the terminology came from erythros and Threos. Sugar names came first, I'm pretty sure. I just didn't know erythros sometimes in biology has a red, it indicates it's red. So I didn't know if it had a red. What? A red. Usually, in biology, it indicates it's a red, red color, erythrocytes, all that kind of stuff. But um, I didn't oh, know. Oh, erythro. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know what the term means or what language it came from. Um, okay. There's another term we can look at down here. Epimers. And this is also on the purple. We're on the other side here. Uh, five. Back side five. Epimers. Epimers are stereoisomers. They're actually diastereomers. That differ by having only one chiral center reversed. Only one chiral center is changed. That's an epimer. For example, many of those are epimers. These two compounds are epimers, ribose and arabinose. Specifically, where has the one change taken place? At C2. C2 would be your second carbon here. At C3 and 4, there is no change. It's projected the same way. Only one change, and it took place at C2. Since there's only one change, they're called epimers of each other. Okay? These are called C3 epimers because the only change is at C3. The others have the same configuration. Now, what's a broader term for these two? Are these two enantiomers? No, they're diastereomers. Because the enantiomer of this would be, all these OHs would be over here, mirroring. Okay? They're diastereomers. Epimer is a specific type of diastereomer where only one thing has changed. Is that only for compounds with uh, more than two carbon uh, centers? No, actually, in the examples we did that were all on the board, those that were diastereomers, they're also epimers. Okay. Because we only really changed one thing. I just didn't call them epimer back then. Uh, if you start changing multiple things, then they're no longer epimers. Epimers is just where you just change one thing. For example, here's glucose. Which of the other sugars are epimers of glucose? Can you find more, at least one? What other sugars are epimer of glucose? Actually, allose is an epimer of glucose. What's the difference between glucose and allose? Only one, in, only one configuration has changed. Because if you take the OH and switch it over here, you're going from R to S. Yeah. These are C3 epimers. Or forget about the C3, don't worry about the number here, but they're epimers. Uh, are any not epimers? Uh, the first one's easy because they're on the right. What about something that, um, yeah, is allose and idose, I don't know this one, are, 
Alice and Idos, are they ephemers? No. No. How many things have changed? Two. two. Once you start changing two things, it's no longer called an ephemer. Ephemer allows you to just say, hey, they're ephemers, and that means, wow, only one thing has changed. Aren't three things changed for Idos? Compared to here? Oh, okay. I thought we were comparing it to glucose. Uh, I was compared to this one. I think two things have changed. So it's not an ephemer. It's more than more than one. Okay, that's ephemers, etc. cetera. Uh, you'll see those in biochemistry. Uh, miso, a lot of that we've already done. Yeah. Uh, there's one on the previous page below. Please do that one on your own. We'll look at it. It got touched a little bit. I think this is an OH. Please try to answer that. Um, we're really down to number seven, finding planes of symmetry. And let's go over to this front page. topic of stereo chemistry. It's not that new, we're just going to practice some more finding planes of symmetry. There's a lot of loose ends though we're going to go back and sort of tile together. We'll do a few more examples. We'll do that on Wednesday. But we also need to start with <coughs> alkyne chemistry. Okay. Please start summarizing, having your questions ready. Before we end today though, let's do a couple here. And find the following is Carl, Carl, a Carl, or Miso. By the way, please have your questions ready up here. See how you're doing. By the way, Wednesday is the midterm, right? Is Wednesday midterm? Okay. All right. Let's do the second one first. Chiral, a chiral, or miso? What are we looking for? Plane of symmetry. Want to tell the compounds chiral? What are we looking for? Waldo. Ultimately. Ultimately, we're looking for Waldo. Okay, do you see anything here? What is that? Plane of symmetry. Plane of symmetry. I mean, this is something, if you're in third grade, you can hopefully see that that's a plane of symmetry. We don't need to know about chiral carbons. Looks like a plane of symmetry. And if it's a plane of symmetry, what does that tell us about the compound? We're gonna, there's a difference. Miso is acyl, a a chiral. This compound does have two chiral carbons. Those carbons are chiral. So look at them. It's a compound that has chiral carbons, yet as a whole, it's not chiral because it's got a plane of symmetry. What do we call this? Miso. miso. Yes, miso is a chiral, but it's a specific type of a chiral. It has chiral carbons, okay? How about, the, how about this guy? By the way, this is cis. These bromines are cis. What about the trans compound? Is it? What do you see in plane symmetry here? No. no. Bromine coming forward is not mirroring a bromine going back. And that's certainly not. There's no plane of symmetry here. We also have two chiral carbons. What's the answer here? Chiral. It's chiral. If you draw the mirror image, it will be the enantiomer. If you draw the mirror image of this, you're going to be drawing the same color. Over here. Answer. You already got it? Chiral. I don't see a plane of symmetry. I did here, but I don't here. No plane of symmetry. Chiral. Oh, a little more difficult here because these things can free rotate. <coughs> what do you want to do here to maybe make it easier? Fisher. I'd recommend Fisher, unless you have some trick that I have. Fisher. 
for all these in fissures. Then look at them. Much easier to find planes of symmetry in fissures. Does it have chiral carbons? Yes, it's got two. But that doesn't mean it's chiral as a whole necessarily, right? It could be miso. Please do those. Practice fissure. Let's look at the next one. Practice your fissures. Uh, this guy here. What do we see? Anything? Clearly that's not a plane of symmetry. Clearly that's not a plane of symmetry. Do we have a plane of symmetry? People want to put in a diagonal in there, but yes, yeah. we have a plane of symmetry right through there. Half a bromine going back, mirrored by half a bromine going back. Half a chlorine forward, mirrored by half a chlorine forward. Half a ring, half a ring. That's a plane of symmetry. I mean, you'll, would you rather me draw it like this? Just because it's diagonal doesn't mean we can't draw it like this and make it vertical. Right? No. By the way, this compound doesn't even have chiral carbons. Is that chiral? No. No, it doesn't even have chiral carbons. This compound is achiral, meaning not chiral. You know what A means? So it's an a chiral compound. How about this guy? You see a plane of symmetry? Obviously, that's not. If we had another methyl up here like that, right, then that would be a plane of symmetry. But we don't have that. Uh, is that one? No. Do we have one at all? I don't see a plane of symmetry. <coughs> like a chiral compound to me. The mirror image should be the enantiomer. Make chiral is in a mirror image and make chiral. I'm just a no chiral. Ultimately, the mirror image has to be, uh, the mirror image is the same. For us, uh, you don't have to have chiral carbon. But you, you can be chiral without even having chiral, chiral carbon. We've never seen a compound like that. But those do exist. Ultimately, it's where's Walter. There's where you get your ultimate answer. Uh, and you only call it miso if it does have chiral carbons, yet it's not chiral. Um, okay, try these. This is a little bit different view here. Sometimes you'll see rings. It's a five-member ring. But instead of drawn flat, it's sort of drawn a little bit differently. So you may see those that time. Okay, please move into review mode of all stereochemistry. We'll see what loose ends are out there. We'll finish up these. Down here at the bottom. Fisher projections.